you know. Exactly. When yeah, there's the nothing, male. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, when you are the ultimate, when you're a millennium man, you know, I mean, what yeah. do you do? Uh, but the young lady that was on, good luck to her. I just wanted to uh, to obviously congratulate her on calling the police and getting the courts involved and uh, and just put the point forward about the other chap that was on uh, Needs His Bumps feeling. But... Um, I, I think you're talking about a very, very good subject, and uh, I hope that a lot more people get the police involved. Yeah, as I say, I apologise that the phone is not a laugh a minute, but I mean, having, having said that, uh, I think we've got to cover all subjects, you know. Yeah, I think it's very important. Um, I mean, people blaming alcohol and drugs and, and other things for hitting women are, it's just, it's just a ruse or camouflage. At the end of the day, it's within them, and it's the alcohol or the drugs that brings it out. But there's no reason at all for anybody ever to hit a woman, whether it's drink or whatever it is. There's no reason, and it shouldn't be put up with by any woman. Absolutely. Uh, and you've contributed to tonight's phone in. You see, there you're on, say, well, oh, it's a bit of, for, uh, it's a bit of a serious show. subject and all that stuff. But having said that, um, I think I would be failing in my duty to the nation. Um, you know, and I do have a duty to the nation to cover all sorts of subjects. And, and if, if they want to talk about it, I think they should be allowed to. I'm sure they should. Um, free speech. That's one free, of the things that we're famous speech. for. That's one of the things we've got left <laughs> in this country. And I'm on my way home to my lovely wife. And Excellent. And I've flowers because I'm late. So, uh, well, I, I wish you all the best. That's what I love I'm. you very much. And thank you very much for allowing me on your uh, program. It's been a pleasure to have you on. And God bless. And many, many happy days. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave, boss. Right, there we are. Um, now, we've got Martin, who's on the M1. Are you there, Martin? Good evening, Scotty. How Good evening, Jim Ace. How are you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, just phoning up uh, to talk to you about all this uh, wife battering or whatever yes. so this going on. Um, a lot I, of people... I can hear a bit of diesel chatter in the background. Yes, that's my uh, that's my oppo driving my car. <laughs> Just back from uh, coming back from Nottingham, making my way to Manchester. Brilliant. So, How long does it take you? Uh, two horrible long hours. Does it really? Ah, uh, yeah. How, how, what route are you taking? I'm ta I'm I'm going on the M1 and then cutting through on the A616 to Manchester. Right. So you're going on the M1 and then you're cutting across what about Stoke? Uh, no, near she past Sheffield and cutting across country up there. Oh, you're going that? Are you coming the Woodhead Pass? Yeah, that's the way. Whoa, well, that's a bit of a dodgy one, that, isn't it? I like the scenic route, you see. At well, this time of the flaming night. <laughs> I know, I've been working, you see, so it's one of them. Do you think that's the quickest route? Because somebody said, I mean, I'm going to Nottingham next week. Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely city, lovely city. Lovely city, you know, and of course we're broadcasting to Nottingham right now. Yeah, yeah, I do believe, well, that's, that's where I picked you up. Yes. Because usually I'm listening to you uh, in the north, which is a different reception, but down the south it's uh, 106, isn't it? 106, well, 106 is based in Nottingham, and I'm going down there on St Andrew's night. Yeah, it's a lovely city, and there. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to join all that together, I think, join the dots. Sorry, there is a fault. There Please certainly is, love. Oh, I, I can't try again. There is a fault. Yeah, I know, I heard you the first again. time, lovey, but he's got to try it. There is a fault. Yeah, but I can't do anything about that, can I? Sorry, so there's no point there in keeping going on to me there repeating it again. and repeating it and repeating it, is there? Sorry, there is a fault. All right, we get Please the message. Sorry, no. there is a fault. Please try again. Right, now you're getting in my thumpnies with that. There is a fault. Right, one Please more and I'm going to cut you off, love, okay? Sorry, there is a fault. Please try again. Right, well, I warned you. There you go. Now, I'm speaking to William. William's from Leicester. Take it in, William. Hello, um, I've been listening to, uh, talking about domestic violence for about an hour and a half now, and now something struck me that the, the, um, the most thorough survey ever done on this subject was published by the Home Office in January, and nobody's mentioned this fact. But well, you have? Well, I have now. If the findings were that um, there's an e exact, almost exactly equal percentage of male and female victims, is 4.2% male victims, 4.2% female victims, um, and of of those, half of them are, are sort of sort of joint violence. That means the male and the female are both violent. Right? That means they're both having a rummy together. Yes, yes. But the other half, the male is so solely violent, or the female is solely violent. Now, the way you're talking about it is as if it's always the men who are violent. Well, it's the men we tend to hear about, isn't it? Yeah, because I suppose men would feel a bit wimpish by saying, what happened to you? The missus beat us up. Well, I think that's one of the things. I mean, let's 
Take, for example, prostate cancer, £47,000 per annum for the whole country when one ma- man dies every hour of prostate cancer, which is more than women die of breast cancer, isn't it? And uh, it's a sort of, it's, a, it's the way... Um, Do you feel, William, that men get a bad deal these days, if we're honest? Um, well, I, I don't want to get into that general point. I want to keep no, no, but I'd be very interested in hearing from you. I mean, you don't have to say it. Just now you can say it later on in the call or whatever, but right, I, I I'm just... Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, I think... Um, I'm just asking uh, you the uh, question because you're obviously an intelligent man. Oh, well, thanks very much. Well, it's a fact, you know, I'm only saying. No, I think, well, I think they do. If you, uh, I would say that, suppose the visitor came from outer space. And, um, you came from outer space? <laughs> somebody came from outer space. Right. He came down to Britain, and they saw that the people were divided into two kinds, male and female, and they found that one of them died nine years younger on average, had three times the unemployment rate and four times the suicide rate, which would they think was the oppressed side of society? And that's it, the man. That is the man, and, but it's always put across as the other way around. So you think that the women are really winning all the time these days? Uh, um, but I, I think I think if everybody says that the women are winning, I think if one sex wins, both sexes lose because it's not a matter of winning. You know, it's, that's not the way to look at things at all. But go, you, you said what well, when you when, it, when, it, when you say winning, right? I mean, the the point I was making. I mean, you're quite right. It's probably not the way to look at things. But the point I'm making is that's the bulk of people's. I mean, I feel McClue speaks for the nation. Yeah. And that's the bulk of people's perception is that life's a bit of a battle and it's become a battle of the sexes. I mean, that's a well-known phrase. And I think that women see themselves as triumphing over men. I think there's a tendency to trivialise it. What, could, what we originally were starting off at banter, which everybody, you know, sort of can enjoy, is turned into something quite vicious. Well, I've always said in a very non-vicious way that the man is king of the jungle. Now, well, I'll give you an example. You, you're talking about this, the violence thing. Now, you said, what causes it? Yes. Now, there's, um, you see, this, you sort, I mean, if, if a government paper, like the Home Office paper, doesn't get out into general public knowledge, there's sort of a research done on this going from one generation to the next, right? Now, if they found out that, um, of course, this is not generally proved, but this, is, this was a couple of studies, found out that if the mother was the violent parent, right, the child, regardless of sex, became the perpetrator of violence on average. If the father was the violent parent, um, the child, regardless of sex, became tend to become a victim of domestic violence. Now, that w- that w- now the way I look at that, if, for example, like people like Aaron Pitsy and all that in the 1970s, said that there was an equal amount of um, violence on either side. So, now, 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 sorry to interrupt, but yeah. this is very important. So, if the mother yeah. is the uh, violently dominant partner, no, the child can become a perpetrator. Yeah, if, 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 if the mother is the vi- uh, violent in that family, yes. If the, the child is more likely to become a perpetrator. Now, what I'm trying to say is that um, domestic violence has been proved as more or less an equal problem for both sexes, right? But it's been put across as a, a problem that men have, men attacking women, right? And the, the amount of violence that women are doing, or mothers are doing, is being played down. So you've had a whole generation being set back there, having these violent mothers who had a problem that the husbands haven't been, hadn't been able to do anything about. So they've been breeding the next generation of violent people. Do you understand what I'm getting at? I do. Now, I, I was do. told by somebody at the Home Office a few weeks ago that uh, one-third of the men in de- death row somewhere in the United States, one-third of them had been abused by their mothers, which is a hell of a statistic, right? Now, so what I'm trying to say is that when when they're looking at the problem in the one side of the way, they're not they're not not honestly looking at the root of the problem, and what they're doing is they're just storing up trouble for the next generation and make a run for their own backs, as it were. Now, if you look, for example, it's the, the men have sort of been demonised that uh, that the, the sort of father, the, the head of the family, is the, always the violent one, or always the um, always the um, the one who's true to the children. Well, I, I mean, I, I played I played my part in that demonisation, I suppose, by by being a little bit naive about this. Yeah. But I'm saying that, but in fact, the NSPCC's own figure said that 60 percent of the violence against children is actually done by women, right? And uh, if there's any uh, violence which is done by males, tends to be. Um, 
a mother who's on her own and has got a succession of boyfriends, and that's that's where you get the, the violence against children. Because there's no connection. Yeah, well, well I, I, whatever reason you give for them, I'm just reporting the statistics of the way I look at it. Well, it's very reasons. interesting that the mother, because in the wild, the mother protects her young. In humans, they don't necessarily. Well, I, I, that's a way of looking at. If you look, actually, if you look at the if you look at the incidence of violence among women and among men. Within, within the family group, if you take all different kinds of cultures, you know, across the world, right, the level tends to be very similar going from culture to culture, the level, the percentage of violence among women, right? But the, the amount of violence upon, uh, uh, done by men, which tends to be more outside the home, varies greatly from culture to culture. They have somewhere like the United States or Israel, which, which tend to be very violent, right? You have other cultures which are not. So, 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 so in, Is in Israel, they tend to be more violent? Oh, yeah. Now, the, the, well, I, I've given that, I could, can't think of all the places at the top of my head, but that's, that's, that's one of the examples. Now, what I'm saying... Well, the United States, they are or they're not? Oh, yes, the United States is obviously an example. But I'm saying that the, 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 um... How do we count? Where do we rate? Oh, well, to tell you the truth, I can't remember, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that, see, if the innate, the, the innate level of violence which is in women would be a sort of innate, inherited thing, if you look at it that way, it's, it's the same across different cultures, right? But the level of violence with men could be, is more environmentally determined, right? It depends on the kind of culture they're brought up And in. what, what makes, what makes the women violent then? A violent well, father? Well, it's, well, well, I mean, this is an interesting point. I mean, you could be on all end about that, but uh, some people think it's got something to do with um, sort of ter being territorial, like to be, they like to be um, sort of in charge in their own house and things like this. We're not just talking about violence against men, we're talking about violence against children as well, but also violence... See, here's an, here's an interesting point, and I know it's, it's a little bit on the trivia side, yeah. but... Say, for instance, this is just an example, or for instance, um, a woman, a man goes and walks his fingers to the bone and he pays for the house and for the kids and for the clothes and for the, the, the jewellery and the cars and everything for the woman. Now, he then comes in and she's been cleaning the floor. Yeah. He, uh, you know, forgets to take his, his hobnails off or something and she does a nut at him. Now, does she have any right to do her nut at him? Because I've seen it, I've actually seen, you know, get these f boots off my clean floor! You know, and you think, hang on a minute, who's, who's paying for all this? I think, well, I think quite frankly, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of people do, a lot of women do think they have a right to do that. I mean, I know somebody that actually, um, well, I've, in contact with a guy who actually runs an agency which deals um, with help for men who've got violent wives and so on, and they sort of suddenly hit a man over the head with a frying pan and say, what do you do that for? He said, you're just sitting there doing nothing, you're lazy, you see? And it's, it's considered to be a laugh, you know, like getting a sort of woman with a, with a, um, a rolling pin waiting for the fella coming home to hit From him. From the and Hardy days. And uh, it's uh, it's not a thing with not a thing that they seem to be so contrite about. I think when you're talking about aggressiveness, I think um, women tend to be verbally aggressive at a sort of lower level of um, irritation antagonism. Men tend to bottle it up, but when it does explode, it tends to get really nasty, right? With, I mean, think, yeah, I suppose uh, you look at this in the work situation, yeah, you get women... How do you know like so much of it? Are you a specialist in this? Well, well to tell you the truth, actually I'm not, but it was a couple of years ago, a local councillor was telling me that he was trying to get a trying to get a home, to get a man away from his violent wife, who everybody knew he's uh, covered with scratches and bruises and so on. Mm. And uh, I knew a case of a guy who um, was asleep in bed, and a, a, a woman, his wife, a woman who wasn't his wife, pushed a glass into his head because he hadn't done the washing up, you know. And um, for one, it, it's um, I know I know one or two people um, slightly who are actually specialists in it, you know. Mm. And uh, because it's so much in the news, occasionally um, we will have a chat about it. That's where I pick me facts and figures up, you see. So um, anyway, to go back to the original point, I think it's to restore some balance, uh, yes. somewhere or other, somewhere or other, the 4.2 percent men who are actually battered husbands are not getting through in this discussion. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Right, right, well, right. I mean, my lines are jammed all night, and it's very difficult. Okay. I, I wouldn't take that as an average. What well, you know, yeah. I wouldn't take the number of calls for and against as an average for you and anything because oh, uh, no. you know the, the 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 lines in this program tend to be jammed the whole night, and therefore there are so many people yeah. trying to get I mean, on. You see, well, well, you see, the thing, the thing is, the area where I live, for example, the council have re refused to accept the fact that 
there is any need for any help for heterosexual men in this situation. Now, they have it for, for women, and they have it for gay men, and they have it for lesbians. By the, way, by the way, lesbian relationships tend to be rather violent, you know. But they refuse to have one for... Is that, is that right? If the lesbians oh, yeah, set yeah, about... Well, I mean, uh, if they set about yeah, each yeah, other, they do it big style, do they? Yeah, well, um, there is... a. There is uh, there was some research which I've actually had a, a quick peek, peep at time. She she gave a quote from it a few months ago. Oh yes, lesbian relationships tend to be quite violent. I mean, this is actually an interesting point when they're talking about adoption, you know, by lesbians and so on. This sort of thing's always pushed into the carpet and always come and say, oh well, tr- um, it's, there's always an idea put across that the most the only people who are violent are heterosexual men. It's completely untrue. Hey. Uh, gay, gays and lesbians, te- lesbians, lesbian relationships are more tend to be more violent than heterosexual relationships, right? And uh, gay men tend to be rather violent. Listen, you've yeah. been fascinating. I'm going to yeah. have to go just a little oh, yeah, bit, okay. but listen, you've got a wonderful accent as well. Where's that from, Sunderland? <laughs> no, no, County uh, Durham. No, Newcastle. Newcastle itself. Yeah. You're a pure Geordie. Yeah. Okay, the material. Uh, you take material, care of yourself. Material. Thanks, material. William. Dinky do. There we are. Now, uh, give us a call as soon as you possibly can, folks. We'll try and get everybody on, but uh, he was interesting. Scotty McClue's Late Night Phone-In. Have you phoned yet? Thank you, dude. 